Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, welcome to the tips and tricks and for online businesses and COVID-19 workshop. Uh, before we get started, let's do a quick audio video check to make sure you can hear my voice and also see the slide on the screen. So if you can, uh, please type yes into the uh, question or chat area. Great, Mary, Marianne, and John, Shane, Angela, fantastic. Okay, you guys can can hear and see us. All right. Great. All right. So my name is Cody. I'm on Duda's marketing team, and I'm joined today by Eric from the account management team. Hey, welcome everyone. Happy to see some smiling faces virtually today. Yes, and uh, we're very very excited to uh, to go ahead and and share these these tips and tricks with you. I know that. Um, Eric on the account management side has been getting a lot of questions from from agencies and businesses about really what to do and and some of the ways that they can help their clients and small business customers uh, during these interesting times. So uh, we've got together some some pretty good tips and and we can't wait to go through them with you. Uh, before we go any further, I do want to let you know uh, this workshop is being recorded. So we're going to go ahead and share that with you. I know some folks had some trouble joining, so uh, we will have uh, this sent out as a replay to everyone uh, by tomorrow, probably. So, anyways, let's uh, let's go over the uh, the purpose of the workshop today, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as Cody mentioned, uh, I am on our account management team. I am seeing some uh, so, some people that I work with actually in here. Hello, Bill, and a couple of other folks. Um, this is kind of the culmination of all of the conversations that I have been having with accounts. Uh, we are in interesting times, to say the least, and uh, it has really been about shuffling and shifting uh, how we're doing business. So I've kind of distilled those conversations that I've had into this presentation that I worked on with Cody just to share some information. It's, it's a more of a discussion and workshop on, on ideas. So um, we're calling it business tips because it's business tips for you as an agency, and it's also business tips for you to share with your clients. So, yeah, we we had a really great conversation, Eric and I, where we we kind of went through some of the things that just some of the common questions that that we're we're hearing on the account management side, and some other tips and advice. Dude is doing a lot on our end to put together new features and tools uh, for you to help you guys out. Uh, and we have some strategies that we'd like to share with you. So we hope that you find this valuable. Um, I think I think we've got some good tips for you today. Uh, and so kind of the layout here, what we're looking at for this workshop, uh, we're gonna start off with uh, the business tips presentation. Uh, then we've got uh, a demo where we're gonna go through kind of a mock site and how to apply some of those, some of those strategies and, and, and features to uh, a mock business site. Uh, and then we're gonna save time at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to type them into the questions box. We've got both Brandon and Kaya in there. We'll be fielding uh, questions for you, and then uh, we'll also save some for the end for Q&A where we can go through and answer those live. So uh, we love doing that and interacting with you, so please don't be shy. Um, okay, so I think that's good. Eric, you want to get started? Yeah, without further ado, um, we're going to jump right into the business tips section here. So um, again, there's been a big shift. I, everybody is operating in some form online. Um, you know, this has hit a lot of different uh, verticals in a lot of different ways. But the one thing that I can say after um, four weeks of lockdown for our California and Colorado offices is that it hasn't been so much that I can't get things. It's just that I have to do them in interesting ways. I have to go online. I need to get information. And uh, savvy business owners are figuring that out and they're moving on there. And I'm certain that you probably have all had some sort of experience around that. But uh, there's maybe things that we can do, like more shifts that you can actually do to help out with this. Yeah, I think that I, I think we've all noticed this. Right. And I think it's really incredible the way some of the businesses around me have changed and kind of pivoted to do that. And just one example I want to throw out there is we have a. A Chuck E. Cheese near us, where like you know their big draw is their entertainment for kids and birthday parties, and they get all their restaurant business from people wanting to show up and be there in person to play those you know arcade games and and win tickets and that whole thing. Uh, so they've had to massively shift their business. They've switched on. They're now on DoorDash and and they're doing like special deals like five dollar large pizzas. They've got guys outside waving signs. 
you know, telling people to stop. And they're really doing everything they can to shift to, you know, online, um, online ordering, pick up, and really get the word out on social media that they're there for, for to go and, and delivery business as well. And uh, they're they're thriving. I was talking with the manager over there, and she was saying that they're doing lots of business now because of the way that they shifted. So, um, savvy businesses can can shift and pivot and do well at this time. Absolutely. So, um, let's click on. I wanted to start with uh, one of the big conversations that I have had with uh, the various different agencies that I work with has been around uh, what are considered to be necessary services. These are businesses that are open period. They're open in some way. They may have limited hours. They may be doing only like delivery and takeout as, as you'll see restaurants. Um, but uh, everything from doctors and dentists, therapists, uh, obviously grocery stores and restaurants are still operating primarily uh, through their internet interface. Even self-care hygiene companies, IT related services. Like I was actually surprised that all of the computer shops in town here and where I'm at in Denver are open because they're considered necessary IT services to keep infrastructure up and running. So um, yeah, they've all updated their websites for the most part to be mentioning that. And then even financial services and banking with all of the loan information stuff going on and people trying to uh, maintain their business, all of those services are considered necessary. One of the key things I skipped in my listing there was plumbers, electricians, HVAC, those are all necessary services because obviously if your toilet is plugged up right now, you're going to be calling a plumber. And I can already tell you that uh, if, if that was something that I needed, I would be jumping on Google, doing a local search and finding out who's open. And the company that I you know already use or another company that I find, uh, what, what they have on their website would be what prompts me to choose them right now. Uh, whether that's that they have normal hours, that they're um, ready to take my call and their phone number is up front and they're mentioning that they've actually updated for COVID. Um, and Cody, you can comment on this. Uh, we've both had experiences where we've been to websites that mention nothing about COVID-19 right now and it kind of makes you nervous. Yeah, I think it does. I think everyone's operating under under the assumption that a lot of businesses are closed. And when you go and like you're, you want to check before you go, you don't want to waste the time to drive somewhere if they're they're going to be closed. So you, I, I'm looking and checking everything. I'm either calling them in advance to see what their hours are. I can't find their information on their website. You know, and I'm assuming that when I see hours on Google Maps or Yelp or something like that, those the, the, those information are out of date unless I see something that tells me, hey, this is updated for COVID. Because uh, I know a lot of the businesses around me that are still open have different hours. And uh, those hours are changing, um, you know, from week to week. So, um you know, it's, it's definitely good to have that. And I, I think everyone's experiencing something like that. Uh, I will add just a couple more things to this list too. Um, you know, like the, the auto repair sites um, that we've talked about, uh, but also like, um, it's kind of interesting near me, there's a, there's like a beauty supply store that you wouldn't think would be open, but they're open because they're selling um, sanitizer, um, gloves, well, yeah. uh, masks, things like this, you know, so you'd be surprised the types of uh, businesses that might still be open and uh, just got to figure out a way to communicate that to people. Let me jump onto the next slide here. Um, there, there are other things that are open too. And these, these are also moving online. They're, they're not necessarily open, you know, physical brick and mortar shops. Uh, maybe they've already been online in some way, but they're also trying to maintain their business. And that's everything uh, from, from numerous retailers. Uh, that have limited business functionality or and and are either running e-commerce or could possibly be running e-commerce. And we'll get to some things that Dude is doing to help you with that. Um, personal trainers and yoga studios. I know one thing um, we're, we're really lucky here at Duda that uh, our management team has been taking great care of us. They signed up uh, online yoga a couple of days a week for employees to get a chance to take a break and relax. And that's an instructor who's getting some business. We're doing it through a Zoom meeting. And again, we'll, we'll talk about uh, things that Duda is doing along those lines. Uh, there's a lot of instructional things and instructors that have moved online, accountants and professional services. And, and then I put others on this list because the reality is if you don't talk to your businesses, you might not even know how they're trying to operate right now and what you can offer them with updates to their website. Yeah, and there, and there might be some creative ways to, to shift their businesses online, like we'll, we'll get to in the demo later, too. 
Absolutely. So um, I think the key thing here is it is time to help your clients. Uh, you may have ideas they don't have. Uh, if, if, if they're like anyone right now, there's just a lot of confusion. A lot of people just don't know what to do. Uh, some people have been super savvy. They jumped right on this. And we are several weeks into this. And I don't want to be pessimistic, but I don't personally foresee things changing in a dramatic way where we flip a switch and everything's just back to normal. So some of this stuff is going to be longer term. Uh, some states will, might extend the hour, you know, the, the number of days that they remain in lockdown. Even when lockdown is released, the discussions that I've seen on the news are about limited ways that things will be going back towards normal, but normal is not on the menu right away. You have to start thinking about actively offering services just because the businesses you're working with are going to be relying on their website more than ever. Yeah, I, I think things are changing at such a rapid pace right now. Uh, like, like I said, there's a place near me. They, they, their hours change from week to week, but depending on the business. At first, it was slow, so they, their hours were limited. Now, this last week, it's gotten faster, so they might expand their hours. And, and as Eric mentioned, when things kind of go back to normal, it's probably not going to be like a light switch. It's not going to be all at once. It's, it's probably going to be certain businesses first, and, and I think we're going to. I think the key takeaway here is that it, things are going to be changing for a while, and there's going to be a lot of updates necessary. And you're going to help need to help your clients communicate with their customers. So your role is is more vital now than than it has been in the past, and um, it will be for quite some time. So along those lines, we've come up with a list. This is by no means complete. This is just to start maybe getting you thinking about things that you can offer to your clients. The There's some obvious ones. If you're working with a restaurant verticals or any of those aforementioned um, verticals that are maybe open right now as necessary services, uh, can they have delivery and pickup options added to their business? And should you have an update on their website about that? Uh, video and virtual services are just massively where it's at right now. I think that's just a key thing. Again, if it's possible to add it, have that discussion. Website and digital presence updates for limited hours. As Cody mentioned, some of that stuff is changing week to week. And it's not just about having it on the website, but also other digital presence things you might be managing. Uh, one of the key things that I noticed, uh, I can go to a lot of the local restaurants' websites around me and I can see the information, but there, Google My Business is also updated. It's real easy to tell if somebody's actually paying attention because Google My Business has a section for uh, if they do delivery and takeout. And I'm seeing a lot of dine in with a red X and delivery and takeout with green check marks. It means they've gone in and updated that information. So key, key, key ways of just making sure that people know what's available and what's open. Same thing with the website and digital presence updates uh, for services that are considered necessary. Again, uh, Cody mentioned a beauty supply that he would have never thought would be open, but they are, in fact, they are a necessary service. And being able to tell people that, hey, we have uh, PPE, personal protection equipment, and uh, sanitizers and things like that uh, is, is, is kind of really important, right? So, then of course, uh, e-commerce as an option. Um, we'll, again, we're gonna cover that we are offering an e-commerce uh, free option for the next week and a half. Otherwise, some people might want to just consider moving to e-commerce in a permanent way. That's the reality. If they had been avoiding that or if it just hadn't been on their radar of something to do, this new world is giving them an opportunity to move and stay active in this world with e-commerce as a solution. Yeah, I think e-commerce is is more relevant now than ever, especially with with um with sites like Amazon extending delivery times and 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 changing kind of delivery expectations and, and just more people shopping online. We're seeing a huge uptick in e-commerce here. Um, I've seen that around the world. Most most people have some of the larger things like Amazon or other companies and they're all stretched thin. They've been the go-to, but I know that I personally have found a lot of direct suppliers and e-commerce uh, you know, companies that are probably normally brick and mortar that have an e-commerce solution. I'm ordering from them and I'm getting something in three or four days instead of the two to three weeks that Amazon or other larger companies are quoting. Yeah, and it's also important to remember e-commerce doesn't just mean like buying and shipping too, right? Because 
we do a lot of online ordering and, and, and ordering for pickup as well. Like I've been picking up from, from local businesses more, finding ways to order from them online and then go pick up in store. Um, just be just out of convenience and, and then also just to know that I've got something and that it's in stock and it's going to be there when I get there because I've already ordered it and paid for it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's just touch on some of the basic tools uh, that are also available. Social media, this just seems like a no-brainer, but encouraging your clients to stay in touch via their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds, driving traffic to their website for updates, or even just simply sharing updates. People have a lot of time right now. They're not necessarily distracted by anything that's past their front door. So um, realizing what's going on in the world, um, even in a commerce sort of way through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram is very important. And even, you know, a lot of our agencies are marketing companies. They cover a lot of this online and, and social media presence stuff. But even just making those recommendations to your clients might be something that makes a difference for them. Yeah, you know, and and the, this also gives you an opportunity to, or for your clients to, to post uh, about what they're doing to protect their customers too, you know, um, about changes that they've made to their store. This is all stuff that needs to be communicated and, and should be communicated on the website. But I know that the rules are changing with uh, businesses by me about um, whether or not you can bring reusable bags into the grocery store, what the social distancing guidelines are in the store, how many people are allowed in the store at any one time, you know, if you're required to wear a mask, if you've got a fever or something, you, you can't come into the store. There's all sorts of rules and, and everything on businesses and everyone has different, slightly different policies and, and these are changing all the time. Um, and, and it's also a way for the business to to show, I mean, to A, communicate those those changes and those rules to their customers, but also tell their customers what they're doing to protect their staff and, and their customers as well. So. Um, there, there's a lot of good information that can come and, and it can be posted to social media that will get attention and people will look at because if they're at all interested in doing business with, with your customers, they're going to want to see that stuff. And it One, also kind of feels good to know that they're taking steps to protect them and, and their employees. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that I know I've seen um, some local grocery stores to me doing is posting on their Facebook when they're at a high volume because... Um, for example, in Colorado today, we're having a pretty good snowstorm and going and standing outside six feet apart from everybody for two hours might not be the best thing. So they're posting up that uh, they, they have lines outside. So if you can wait to do your shopping, it might be a more pleasant experience. Just little things. Yeah, drive up, man. <laughs> we did drive up at a grocery store near me and it was it was it's not like a, a perfect system you have to like call them when you get to the drive up spot for pickup but it was so nice because they came out and brought the groceries out to our car and we saw the, there was like a line of 25 people at the grocery store we didn't have to wait in it because we, we we bought online and did, did the drive up order so i can only yeah. imagine if there was snow holy holy cow <laughs> it is it is definitely a little bit of a shift out here right now um other tools, so video conferencing. We uh, we did launch a Zoom widget. Zoom changed some things on their end and we had to take it down, but guess what? It is back up. So our Zoom widget is up, fully working. That is a fantastic thing that you can add to somebody's website that lets people jump straight into a Zoom meeting once they visit your client's website. Um, again, this is great for personal trainers or anyone who wants to conduct business in a more face-to-face -face way, but virtually. So. And, then and we'll show you the Zoom widget in the demo later too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that up when I go into the demo mode. Then there's other solutions. There's, there's Google Hangouts, uh, Go to Meeting. We're using that right now uh, for this. Then Skype and other VoIP services. So again, talking to your clients, figuring out what they're doing, and even just an update that says, "Hi, I'm a you know instructor, and I will uh, do my instruction with you directly via Skype." And and just having that update on the website again. I can't stress enough that to me, it feels like if I go to a website that hasn't been updated with some sort of news or bulletin about how they're operating during COVID-19, my initial reaction is to think that maybe they're just not operating. Yeah, I think it's important to, to note here too that um, besides what we have listed on the screen, there's there's so many more, uh, like, you know, there's, I think, like therapists and doctors are using uh, Teladoc, um, you know, there's people who are using FaceTime on their, on their, their iPhones um, or, or Mac devices. There's Google Duo on a Android. 
Uh, so there's there's so many different ways that we can do to video conferencing. It doesn't have to be Zoom, um, but but you do probably want to have something. And Zoom is super popular right now, so it might be a time to educate your customers about these options and what they offer, and learn about it yourself. It's, it's kind of part of your repertoire as a as an agency representing companies online. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, E-commerce and business management options. So uh, we, of course, have our VC to app. And one of the things that Duda has done is extended the trial period from 30 days to 90 days on that. Now, VCTA is an online booking solution. It's also an online invoicing solution. This could work for a lot of people that are trying to run their business in that way. It allows people to create signups and manage all of that and create events that they can have signups for, all in a convenient floating widget that goes over the website. Uh, and then even being able to invoice and collect payment from people and just making that all move to an online thing. You may have personal trainers who are used to carrying around an old fashioned square swiper, and now they need to move to being able to accept payments through their website in a little click box that now exists. That It's a, it's a powerful tool, and with the 90 day trial extension on it, you can actually play with it. We also have a free full featured e-commerce solution that we have launched. It's a 500 product store with basic payment methods of Stripe and PayPal. Um, it has a new feature that's across all of our e-commerce uh, that, that they launched as well, which is gift cards. So again, nice and powerful. I know that uh, many, many things have been shared to, with me via gift cards so that uh, that's just, it's a way that a lot of people are operating is here's a gift card, go to this site, spend it on this thing, even if it's a service. Um, your customers can move their sales and business online. I think that's kind of the key thing the key takeaway from this entire workshop today is that it is possible for people to operate online. And right now, that's saving jobs and it's saving lives. Yeah, I think this is your opportunity to help those businesses um, move and, and pivot and, and and it is saving jobs. If businesses are able to stay open, those are employees that still have jobs, you know, like those restaurants, those servers are now delivery drivers, right? And you know everything you can do to to help out and and I, I think as an agency you have an opportunity right now to to help these businesses and you will for quite some time and 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 not just in in switching their business online but in updating their their digital presence helping them guide your customers through this kind of challenging time um, you're you're showing your value and 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 helping them out and they're going to remember that for for a long time and we will have more to come. I, I know that there's some things that we've been discussing internally here at Duda, but any kind of solutions that we can offer to you uh, that'll make a difference in this, we're going to, we're going to have it. You'll see it in the new product updates and on our resource center. So keep an eye on things. Like I said, we're, we're committed to keeping everybody up and running as best as possible as a, a website platform and, and, and such a tool for the digital agencies out there. So anything that's coming along, we will share with you as soon as possible. Yeah, we actually have a, an email plan for later today that you guys will be getting from uh, from our chief customer officer with, with uh, some more details and, and things as well. Yes. So now it's time for the demo. I am going to jump out of here and jump into the site editor. So uh, Brandon, who is um, answering questions right now actually came up with this idea in our planning for this and created something that maybe isn't anything that people would be thinking about, but here's an example of a cheese shop. Uh, for example, they are a grocery store, so they are going to be open right now. They also have a core business, which is kind of you know high-end cheeses and things like that. So we thought it'd be interesting to take a look at something that's just not maybe a bunch of obvious things and share uh, some of the simple updates that we can do. Uh, the first thing that I wanna go through, and we haven't mentioned this yet, is we have uh, our personalization engine. And one of the things that we added to that is a COVID-19 uh, rule. It's just a preset. You can build your own. You could create everything that this does with build your own because you have complete flexibility. But this one's just kind of preset. So uh, I wanna go through it real quick. I'm gonna click on select rule here. And uh, then we're going to edit the rule so that just we can see how it's set up. 
So uh, as is usual in our personalizations, we get a sentence that explains exactly what's gonna happen. It updates in real time as I make changes to things, but currently it's set that if the visitor comes to the site every day until May 30th, 2020, there's gonna be a notification bar on the site. So I can customize the times of this and uh, edit different things as necessary. But uh, this is a pretty good place to start right now. I'm gonna click next. And now we can see the example of what's gonna be in the notification bar. And in this case, we just put in some generic text here. Stay up to date on the latest COVID-19 related guidelines in your area. And then we have a read more, uh, which is a link. And you can customize that link to go to a page or an anchor on a page or anywhere that you wanna have that information. Maybe you don't even need a link. You just need to say, hey, we are open you know check our hours for adjustments or we're doing delivery and pickup whatever kind of information that you want to be front and center when somebody visits the site this personalization can be customized to deliver that once we've determined what that's going to look like we'll give it a name it's already pre-named as COVID-19 and then I can save the rule and as of right now it is active on this site now you can always preview these if I click on the preview tab up here, and then I've got this drop down for selecting the rules that are available. And when I click on it, it's going to show me this. And let me just click out of that. And so that's what we're gonna see whenever we visit this site. So, and all I need to do to make it live is to republish. So it's a great way to grab attention and let people know that there are things uh, that your various businesses you work with are doing right off the bat when the site gets visited. And that, that's exactly what I'm looking for when I go to every website, I'm looking for something that says COVID-19 with updates from that business. And if I don't see that, I don't trust it. I don't trust that they're open. Now, another thing that seems kind of like a no brainer is something like, um, let's go ahead and add a row above here. And we can do some simple things with, a title widget and a text widget um, and just give people a section right here where we explain here's what we're doing change this wait just edit that color and now We've got a spot where we can add in a bullet list. We can say, check our hours, or we are open right now. Again, I have seen these things on pages, um, entire like sections that were not previously on websites that are explaining exactly what's going on. In the case of like this cheese shop, we can be talking about how they are a grocery store. They have basic necessities. Maybe they even have toilet paper in stock and wanna let people know about it. So there's different things that they can do. And these sections can be easily updated whenever because you can even hide or delete the row and go back to the way that the site was beforehand. Now, another option that uh, we mentioned earlier is we have our um, Zoom widget, which is now live. And if you go into widgets and search for it, you will see it. Zoom meeting widget, it is pretty simple. It is, it is configurable. Uh, one of the things that I did just kind of preset for this was um, I created it in a pop-up. And so what I wanted to do is I'm going to create a button here real quick that says join us. And I'm going to link it to the pop-up that I created and I've called it online tasting. So in an example here, uh, one of the things that this cheese shop can do to still interact with their clientele and their local community is do online tastings, talk about the different cheeses that they have, how they taste, uh, what they go well with, and all of that sort of thing. And they could do it via a Zoom meeting that people can just jump in. And then when somebody has to go in and go shopping for necessities at their grocery store, they can pick up some of these interesting cheeses that they learned about in an interactive meeting. So now that that's live, uh, we can go into pages and that pop-up that I linked to is right here. And again, I, I already configured this. So join us here for virtual cheese tasting. And in this widget, you can see that we can configure it. All we need is the default meeting ID, uh, requesting an ID and, and request a meeting password. Uh, I can turn those off if they aren't necessary. So the fields are completely updatable. I can call the join button, whatever I want to, and edit the text and label names. And then standard design also in here, I can make all of the text and fields whatever color that I want to. 
So pretty straightforward, but a really easy way to make it so that if somebody visits the website, they can get straight into a virtual meeting with that particular business. Yeah, I mean, just just real quick aside, I would almost think the virtual cheese tasting would be a product they could sell. Like you'd buy a package of a selection, a pre-selected assortment of cheeses, and then you join and eat and taste those cheeses with uh, whatever the cheese sommelier is. I don't know what that's called. They can kind of walk you through and then you could do the tasting with other people. I think that would be a cool thing. And let me just be clear, just so that people understand kind of how this can work. With the meeting ID and the password, you can do that so that the business can share that information. So not just anybody can jump into this. So if it's something that they're selling or whatever, they can also set up their email uh, that goes out to people who sign up for something or pay for a service with that meeting and ID and password. And that will, in fact, make it so that it's a limited access meeting that can be charged for. Perfect. And you, you can do that for booking appointments for professional services as well. Absolutely. Things like Teladoc have that sort of thing built in as well. So, um, you know, everything for any kind of professional service, you could you could have people signing up for yoga instruction with a meeting ID that's unique to each person. So it could be one on one yoga meetings and all they have to do is go to the website, put in their ID, password, name and email, click join meeting and they're talking to their instructor right away. Fantastic. So that was just a quick uh, going over. Anything else you can think of worth demoing on here? Um, again, some key things, uh, maybe updating the hours on the website seemed like a wise thing to do. Just the little things that might actually make a big difference you know, for these companies. Um, yeah, I, I think- No business you're working with, it's not gonna need those. Yeah, I'm definitely looking for that. I mean, the the COVID-19 notification bar at the top, I think is hugely important. I think putting something prominent at the top of the website, so as soon as it loads, people know that, hey, this has been updated. Are you open or not? What are those hours? What are your rules? You know, th this is what people are looking for. So having that notification bar is huge, but also having it down to those business hours section, I think is, is important as well, you know, so, um, so people can see that. Uh, going through the Zoom widget stuff was fantastic. I think one of the other questions um, people are going to have is about um, how we can use our e-commerce solution to um, add online ordering for restaurants. Uh, Cody, I am so glad you asked that. If you visit our resource center in our blog, you will see that we have a very full featured article on how to set up a restaurant website with online ordering using our uh, e-commerce and, and some other options as well. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do for your companies. Uh, I will tell you that um, I have seen companies that were never on uh, DoorDash and Grubhub are suddenly on there right now. And again, that's an update to the website to put, you know, order through DoorDash or Grubhub. Just make sure it's on there so that people know. Uh, but likewise, there's other online ordering systems. And we have this great article that you can go through and get a lot of ideas from. Yeah, this is a really great resource, and, and again, you can find it. Just go to duda.co slash blog, and uh, this this is a, a great way to add that online ordering. And, um, and I, I want to let you know that... Oh, 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 go ahead, Cody. I was just going to say, we're releasing a lot of news here, so check our blog often. Yeah, yeah. And the, some of these articles we're, we're updating, especially the, um, the COVID-19 response article as well. Uh, but I want to let you know, speaking of the online ordering, um, you can absolutely do that with Duda's e-commerce system. And, and we've got um, a demo here. Uh, you guys know that Duda's e-commerce is powered by Equid, and Equid put together a, uh, a, a taco shop website here, which shows how you can use the e-commerce system for online restaurant ordering. And uh, Eric, you want to walk us through buying some lunch here? Yeah, absolutely. So you can see that on this homepage of, their, of this site they threw together, uh, we have all of the different options, including drinks and all of that. And what I can do is simply add them to the cart or click the Buy Now button. And once I do that, I have the option to select different things uh, as well as quantity. I can add more. So if we want to get egg and sour cream and jalapenos, that'd be my we choice. Want two burritos, man. Two burritos. <laughs> oh, yeah. And let's just make it so there's two. And then I can add more. Um, once I have all of that information in here, um, I can go to the checkout. Now, the checkout has been uh, just structured to work well with this. So we have a couple of different options. We can select delivery, 
and payment information and all of that to check out, put in my email address when I click on this, you'll see that now I have the option to ship it, which is one way of saying delivered, uh, or I'll pick it up myself where I can put in this other real information. Quick. Go ahead. Yeah, Eric, real quick, we did have a question. Uh, someone was asking if Equid will be offering date and time picker function for delivery the same way uh, that we have for the pickup store option, as it's only available in, in store pickup right now. And I think it, it doesn't look like that option's in here. It isn't. Uh, they are probably working on adding some of this stuff. Again, some of this is a big turn on the ship. And, and as I said, some of this is not going to necessarily change back right away. So these might be options. So um, we are definitely working with Equid to uh, make this flow work even better with this. But in this example, it still does give us some options uh, to make this happen. Uh, one of the things that can happen too is a callback can be set up so that when this ticket comes through the e-commerce solution on the website, uh, the restaurant itself could call and verify things and give them a time. So there's a lot of different options there. Yeah, sounds good. So when I click on continue here, now uh, in-store pickup, so this is a test store, it's not actually gonna charge me right now, but pickup time, I can actually see here as well. I can set it and then click continue. So we do have the time picker and then payment information. So um, it's not a big shift, but the store is actually, uh, has been updated a little bit to work well with this. Yeah, I think this is a great option and you can do this right now just with uh, with the e-commerce as it is in Duda. Absolutely. So that is uh, what we had for the demo um, portion of things. Uh, now uh, we'll just do a quick recap. I'm gonna make my screen big again. So uh, just to go over what we went in the demo, we had the personalization settings as well as new rows and informational sections that you can add. We went through the uh, Zoom widget and when we talked about the e-commerce and online ordering. Anything you think we missed on that, Cody? Oh, yeah, sorry, I was I was on mute. <laughs> I was just gonna say that, yeah, I, I think this is, this is a great recap and I, I think those are things that you definitely wanna talk with your customers about. And, and I just wanna reiterate what I said earlier that this is, Definitely an opportunity for you to be a resource and and a partner with your with your customers. Uh, it's a challenging time uh, for everybody, especially for small businesses. And I think it's really nervous for people who work at, at small businesses. My mom works in a small business, and and I'm doing everything I can to help her business, setting them up a website, getting them going. And, and this is really your chance to uh, to be that resource and guidance for your for your clients, um, not just now, but for the foreseeable future. And um, these are some great ways that you can add some tools and resources to help those businesses out. And I wanna let you know that Duda, we are constantly working every day really, really hard to put together what we can to help you guys out and, and be a resource for you. That's why uh, we've got this workshop. We've got so many other workshops um, coming up too, um, as well as putting together like white label decks, uh, you know, all the different plans and the free trials, extending the free e-commerce. Uh, so we're, we've got lots of stuff in the works on our side to be a resource for you. And, and I think everybody just wins if we all help each other out right now. Absolutely. So let's do some Q&A. All right. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and add those to the, uh, the questions box. Uh, Eric and I can, can stick around and and see what we can do to uh, help answer those questions. Let's see, Sean is asking, is there any chance the sign up for the special store offer may be extended beyond April 30th? So uh, we've been having some internal discussions on that and we have been talking about some of those options. Um, it's something that we had to work with Equid on. So we are going to continue having those discussions, but uh, at this point I can't guarantee it. Uh, it is definitely something that I would like to see done and, and I'm gonna suggest that heavily to our team. Yeah, great, great question. 
Let's see. Um, Garrett's asking, what sort of new apps are coming? So uh, in our previous workshop, we had covered some of the apps that we have coming. Some of them are going to be uh, some of the privacy things for enhancements, basically, for GDPR and California laws uh, regarding privacy. That's in the works. Uh, we haven't fast-tracked any apps that I am aware of, so we're still just in our normal uh, build-out phase on that. But right now, I will say that for online presence, uh, Uberall is fantastic and can really handle pushing out information, especially since we're talking about all these updates and things that need to be spread all over the place. Uh, Uberall covers Google My Business as well as other services in basically a reputation management, but also at this point, news sharing way. And then Visita, again, we kind of covered, is a really cool tool for people to start shifting, booking appointments and collecting money from their clients uh, on their website directly. Great. Let's see, uh, Bill is uh, is asking, and it's a good point. He says that the COVID bar overlays um, the cookie notice or vice versa. Is there any option uh, other than to do a manually created pop-up? There is not at this time. Um, I will definitely let the team know about that. That's kind of a, a thing I guess I hadn't noticed before, but um, a pop-up would work well. Also, you can use the personalization if you create your own custom rule to show a row uh, at the top. So you could actually have the row even in the header that shows um, an updated notification with the same rules as the pop-up uh, or, or the, uh, notification bar. So a row like right below navigation or something like that would move it down. That would be an option. Yeah. And, and unless you want to do like a specific time frame, you could just add a permanent row to the top. I mean, this is going to be here for at least, at least a couple more months uh, at very least. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I would actually suggest, I mean, in, in my personal opinion and recommendation, I think the personalization tool is very cool and it's very useful for things. This might be a time to just add a permanent row to the top of the bar. And then when the cookie notification comes up and pushes everything down, once they close that, it's still up there front and center. Right. Let's see, Garrett's got some questions here. He says, uh, when the uh, special store runs out, which level of store is it more equal to? So it's in between the 100 and the 2500 product store, but with less payment options than both of those. And when that store runs out, which right now it would be scheduled uh, at the end of the year, so basically December 31st, um, well before that, we'll be offering and, and alerting you to, you know, talk with those customers about moving to a permanent solution in the 100 or 2500 product store. If they have a ton of products, it might make sense to just push them to the 2500 product store. If they never listed up very much during the time they use the 500 store, the 100 store might be perfectly adequate. So, uh, we're going to give you that option, and don't worry, we're going to remind you well ahead of time so you can start that conversation with your clients. Hmm. Yeah, he's also saying, uh, I was hoping for something like a geodirectory, trying to set it up in WordPress and ready to kill someone. It's such a pain. WordPress is horrible. <laughs> well, we agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, we've got sympathetic ears over here, Garrett. Let's see, David is saying, uh, what will the e-commerce package cost after the trial? Will be based. I think kind of covered that already, right? Yeah, it'll be based on the prices for the 100 and the 2500 product store. So that'll be the options. Those will be the prices you can start talking to your clients um, early on, or just work out with them. Uh, the worst case scenario, if somebody doesn't want to continue it, the store will just default down to a demo store, and um, that that that's what's going to happen. There's not going to be any hidden charges on this unless you move them to another plan. Yeah. Sean is saying this is what we did for all of our clients at a permanent row. It also helps us stay in touch with clients and let them know we're monitoring the situation. I think this is kind of like when you like in college, you go to like a study session and the professor says, okay, it's always the students that don't need to show up or the ones who do. This is a good example of that, Sean. <laughs> it sounds like you're already on top of it. You've got a permanent row for your clients. You're helping them out and letting their customers know that you're monitoring the situation. I think that's fantastic. That's exactly what you need to be doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Don is saying WordPress is awful. Your ads worked amazing bringing me in because I was using WordPress and yours is just so much better. Thank you, Don. 
I'm going to tell my boss about that. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad those who attend our workshops regularly will uh, may actually recognize Cody's voice from workshops years ago. He used to do a lot of these, um, but he's been on the marketing team, and and so um, I actually requested him to help with this uh, because our marketing team right now is such an integral part of how we're dispersing this information. So, shout out to Cody for joining us from our marketing team today. Cool. Thank you, thank you, Eric. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. I I don't know if anyone is joined today from uh, back when I used to do these, but uh, it's it's really cool to to get a chance to to hang out and chat with you all today. Let's see. Coral is saying the after effects of COVID will have plenty of people donating. Do we have a donation widget that will show the amount to collect, uh, etc.? We do have the uh, PayPal donation widget. However, I have seen, and just these are clients I work with, I have seen numerous different donation engines from various different nonprofits and some generic ones that have very simple code snippets that can be added to any site. So I would talk to your clients about what form of donations they would like to maybe add to their websites. Um, it's a very simple process. Trust me, these donation companies want their widget out there. They have very simple code snippets that you can add. Nice. Uh, in a similar vein, Coral is also asking, uh, do we have a review option where customers can input their reviews? We don't actually have a review engine right now. There's a couple of different services that I've seen people add. Um, there's a um, reputation management platform from a company called Broadly that works with our platform. They're actually a customer of ours and build websites on our platform as well as selling their product separately. Um, and there's just a ton of reputation management that also allows online reviews and things like that to uh, be curated in a way that things like Yelp don't necessarily do. So, yeah, and she's also asking about uh, Google reviews. Like yeah, Google reviews are harder to shift. Google doesn't actually usually publish much in the way of ways to push those on to the platform. Yeah. Google wants you to be on Google's websites to read reviews. Unfortunately, it's kind of their business model. Right, and and those Google reviews can really help out um, the business too. It helps with uh, the the SEO. Um, Andrew Shotland discussed this in a webinar um, uh, we did with him last year about how just how much the Google reviews really affected that. Um, check out the uh, the resource center webinar section for a replay of that webinar. Um, and one thing that I would also recommend is that you can always go and copy some of those Google reviews, create a row, and use. Um, any number of our various different widgets to just copy and paste those reviews in there. It's a perfectly valid way of getting that information up on the website, even if they're not linked to the actual Google review. All right, that, that's a really that's a really good way to do that. I mean, think of those reviews as testimonials that you can put on your site. Really, yeah, you're just creating it. We have a testimonial slider. Now you've got content off of the Google reviews to put in it. Uh, especially if the reviewer has like a like an avatar or you know some sort of image that you can use too. Uh, let's see, John is asking, he says, I think the new store option will help some clients keep this moving forward. Thanks for offering it. But many of my potential clients have a very small number of items. Any chance of a smaller version of store at a smaller price? We, again, are talking to Equit about options. We are not sure exactly what uh, we're going to be able to do in the next couple of weeks. Again, we're aware that this isn't going to go away, so we will talk to Equit about some different options. So um, just stay tuned. We will be seeing what we can do to meet those demands. Uh, and real quick, Coral's saying uh, the stars look better though. LOL. Uh, the stars do look better, but you know you can you can still add stars. I like if you go like you can Google image like five stars or star image and put those in there. You know you can represent. I wouldn't lie and say it's five stars if it's a three star review, but you know you can absolutely put your own stars in there uh, in in that due to widget like uh, like Eric was talking about. Uh, Garrett is saying AppSumo just had a free deal for a review aggregating tool. The name escapes me right now. He's on his phone. Um, but yeah, definitely check out if AppSumo's got like a, a review aggregator or something. Maybe it's something you can embed some um, some reviews into the Duda site. Well, that might be a great way to go. Yeah, code snippets are very popular. These apps have code snippets. And I will easily say 99% of them work great if you just drop them into an HTML widget on one of our sites. Excellent. So I think that's that's about it. I think we're going to wrap up here. So 
I'd just like to um, to thank everyone for attending. And uh, you know, I know that uh, we're all busy right now, and it's a it's a, a really critical time. So thank you for sharing some of your time with us, and uh, and we hope that you found this valuable. So thank you from our end. Yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, stay safe out there, and uh, as always, you can always send us feedback. Uh, let our support team know if you need anything, and we will be here to help. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Stay safe.